The Honourable Kyle McGinn. Thank you, Mr Acting President. Um, I move the motion standing in my name that this House acknowledges that whilst we are the most progressive point in history for acceptance, discrimination still plays a damaging role in society and that this House recognises discrimination in sport that athletes face on a professional and amateur level and acknowledge the McGowan government's com commitment to change. Honourable Members, the question is the motion be agreed. The Honourable Kyle McGinn. Thank you, Mr Acting President. Normally, I'm very proud uh, to bring a motion to this House for private members, um, but unfortunately, I'm not too proud to bring this one in today. I do understand the importance to bring it, and I'm a little bit upset that we are standing here in 2019 talking about discrimination in sport still today. There's been a few recent um, high-profile events that uh, no one can ignore. Um, I don't believe that we can ignore, and I don't believe Australians have ignored. I think the backlash has been um, pretty, pretty powerful, um, and uh, the effects of social media, I think, we'll touch on a bit today in today's motion as well, and the changing way that we're seeing discrimination play a role. Um, and some of the examples I'll give today, I think, will, will give members something to think about. Um, something that I'm expecting and hoping to see today is something that I don't, uh, haven't normally seen since I've been in here is all of us in agreement. Um, I think everyone can agree that uh, there is a problem with discrimination in sport and uh, I'm very intrigued to see members' thoughts on that. Discrimination of any kind has no role to play anywhere in society, in my view. I do, do believe that we live in a time where we are seeing it stamped out more and than any other time in history. Um, I think we are very progressive in that space, but whilst I recognise this, I would like, I would assume, like most other people, you see discrimination in your day to day, uh, whether it be in sport or just in your workplaces or around the streets or on TV. Growing up in Darwin, I played rugby league. Um, I didn't see when I was a young fellow race. Oh, Thank you, uh, Mr Acting President. Rugby League is probably not so big over in this side of the country, but uh, massive in Darwin and, uh, and the East Coast. Um, go Melbourne Storm. Um, look, uh, at, at that young age, racism wasn't at the forefront, um, in my mind. Um, I don't think in any kid's mind racism's at, at the forefront. Um, you're just trying to be a kid and get along with, the, with your life. Um, everyone on my team was a teammate. No different uh, whether they were an Aboriginal, a white, um, Chinese, Fijian, Kiwi, it doesn't matter. Um, everyone was a teammate. I do remember an incident that I look back now, um, and it's quite actually quite disturbing, but I only realised this many years later. I was selected to represent uh, the NT for the Casuarina team. Um, proud moment, we got to travel over to a remote town called Nullumboy. Um, so lots of fundraising and everything to get over there. Um, and one of the things that we did was get billeted out. Um, when you got there, you got billeted out with another family that either had a child that was playing in the competition or a family that was friendly in the community that, that wanted to take on one of the kids. Um, so all the teams from Darwin, as is normal, uh, is made up of a multicultural mix. Um, Aboriginal, Fijian, Kiwi, um, you name it, they're all up there. It's a, it's a multicultural melting pot. We were billeted out to families in the town, which saved us a lot of dollars, um, and it was great for us to get to know the local families and the hardships. Nullumboy was a mining town, so it was quite an experience to see the difference that was happening there. Without mining, that town um, has actually disappeared, so it's, it was quite in, important. My teammate that I was billeted with, was, uh, his name was Aidy Boy, and uh, he was a young Aboriginal lad, and I'd played rugby with him most of my childhood in many teams, um, and we were being picked up at the airport and uh, by our billet. And the billet went and had a chat to the coach and there was a bit of an issue going on, we couldn't understand what it was. Um, and then all of a sudden, AD was moved to another house and another kid who was a white kid was brought in with me and we went into that house and we built it out together. I think back now on all the little things that happened um, that, you know, didn't notice at the time. And it makes me really, really seriously think um, how that, tiny little thing could affect um, my mate, Aidy. You know, that tiny little bit of, I don't want an Aboriginal in my house, reflects on a child who doesn't quite understand what's going on. Um, naturally, children don't understand it. Um, and racism isn't, you're not born with it, in my opinion. It's built into you as you grow up. I believe I grew up respecting all human beings, regardless of their gender, skin colour, culture, disability, etc. 
Um, kids grow up learning from their parents and role models. If we as role models and leaders and parents don't set the example, what do we expect is going to happen? The flow-on effects are discrimination throughout the rest of their life. I feel like discrimination in sport has come a long way, but I feel this has only just started to truly turn. Women's cricket, AFLW and NRLW are finally starting to get some of the limelight that they have always deserved. If I was to reflect on my experience with being a spectator to sport, it's easy to say five years ago, I didn't watch any women's sport. But today I thoroughly enjoy watching women's cricket. How good is the quality of our Aussie women's team? How good is that? Um, let's be honest, our men's team was going through a rough patch. Sandpaper gate. Um, anybody? Um, and the Aussie women have been on fire. Uh, the likes of Med Meg Lanning, Alyssa Healy, Elise Perry are amazing role, role models for young women who want to take on professional sport in the future. And they've been hanging around this code for a long time, waiting, waiting for Australia to pick up on it and finance it and support them. A lot of them do it voluntarily. It's not paid, unlike in uh, the men's sport, which has got infrastructure and has got all these things in place. The women fight to make sure they can get on that centre stage. I was trying to avoid getting this one on Hansard, but uh, I'm a very, I know how passionate West Australians are with their footy teams, but I'm very proud to say I'm a staunch Adelaide Crows fan. I support both the AFL men and the AFL women's team. <laughs> no, no rocks around here, excellent. Um, <laughs> so first and foremost, uh, a huge congratulation to the women's team on the weekend who have gone on to take their second premiership, the Adelaide Crows, uh, in the AFLW. That's two out of three. That ain't bad, in my opinion. Um, I think we've got many more of them to come. Uh, we ended up winning 10, 10 goals three to Carlton's two goals six. And to my brother-in-law, Marty, sorry, mate, but Carlton just can't quite cut the mustard in either of the divisions. Um, but hang in there, please. Uh, no, but in all, all seriousness, the hardship these women face coming in and trying to get on the stage with the men needs to be recognised. The men have an established code that has been around forever and a day, which brings with it support structures, finance and a fan base. Here in Western Australia, I can proudly say, last year we've seen the biggest crowd attendance at an AFLW game, 41,975, going to the first game at Perth Stadium. How great is that? All the talk that no one will go and watch women play football, what a load of rubbish. It was shot down very quickly with 41,975 fans attending. We now have a bit of a challenge on our hands, though, um, because West Australians are very competitive by nature. Um, the AFLW Grand Final in Adelaide seen 53,000 fans stack in to watch that game. Absolutely amazing. Um, I want a quick mention to Aaron Phillips, the captain of the Adelaide Crows team, um, who also won player of the match after getting injured in the third quarter halfway through. That's how good she was. And, she went on to win um, the most valuable player in the league. But there's a comment that was made that I think is very powerful, she said during her speech. And I'll read it out now off an ABC um, uh, media statement. My dad obviously played footy, and when I was born, people felt sorry for him because he didn't have a son to play footy someday and carry the Phelps name. Well, Aaron, I think you've proven that uh, you don't have to be a boy to uh, be a superstar in the AFL arena. And that shows how far we've come, that there's a platform for someone like Aaron to get up there and say to the haters, I'm not going to cop it. It's absolutely brilliant. Turning to the AFL men's side of the AFL, we have another big discrimination issue there, always. It's always been there, um, and it rears its head every now and then. It tends to come from men that have been around the game for a long time and hold positions of power. I am not sure how many members in this room support Collingwood. I'd expect it to be very little. Oh, no. You're right in front. You're about to cop an absolute serve. <laughs> Look, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if there was a few in the other chamber, but I was hoping for none in this one. Um, but there is one man who has had a career of shameful acts and has simply let it die down, apologise, and say it makes him feel sick a little bit waits for, the blow, uh, for it to blow away, and then slides on back in. I'm talking about Eddie Maguire. If you don't agree with me now, I hope after a little recap on his history, that'll change. Just a little Google search, I found plenty of stuff that made me angry about Eddie. 
I was originally wanting info on the recent disgusting comments he made whilst commentating in the last AFL men's round. To even think it's OK to talk that way at a pub would be considered unacceptable. But this is a bloke who is on live TV telecasting, not just around Australia, but around the world. He should feel sick and ashamed, and the backlash he got was great to see from many Australians who were upset about this. Of course, I'm talking about his comments he made around the coin toss um, at the Sydney Adelaide game. Um, if people didn't see it, I suggest you have a little look at what happened. Eddie has a habit of saying what he thinks, and he thinks it's OK to say what he wants. I think it's a disgrace for someone in a position of power to think that they can just get away by saying off-the-cuff comments that has ramifications right through um, people's lives, family circles and also, um, in this case, people of disability. Eddie um, stood himself down uh, after making the comments, which is a bit of a, a shame for the AFL. Um, I think he should have been stood down immediately by the AFL. But he made comments um, that Cynthia Bayman, who was a double amputee um, after going through a plane crash, um, should have tossed the coin better. Um, if anyone watched it, I actually thought it was a pretty good coin toss myself. Um, try standing out in the middle of a field with a crowd like that and tossing a coin, no matter who you are, I'm sure it's quite difficult. But that wasn't enough for Eddie. Um, Eddie had to go on and, and make comments that people should train for a week before they go out there and do it. And it was quite downtrodden talking towards this lady and uh, it was unacceptable. But the backlash come out. It come thick and it come fast. It come from Sydney. Sydney were upset about it. Um, and they went out there and said, you know, it's a disgrace and it can't be accepted in the game. He had to stand himself down the next day. Shouldn't have been himself. Should have been stood down by the AFL. Absolute disgrace. Eddie Maguire also, if you remember, um, made some disgusting comments in 2013 um, in respect of Adam Goods. So we've seen a Collingwood fan turn around and use the word ape towards an Indigenous player, which is an absolute disgraceful comment to make. Um, and it has a very painful history to it, which should never be used towards an Indigenous Australian. It's disrespectful and disgusting. But this man of privilege turned around and said that he should be used to promote the King Kong musical just days after this incident had taken place. This is a man who's supposed to be representing a football club, representing the AFL, goes out there and not just condones the comments, makes them even worse. You're a shame on the game, Eddie Maguire. You should be ashamed with yourself. And I think anyone who's a member of that club should go out there and write a letter and ask for his resignation. He's a disgrace. And he constantly makes comments like this and gets away with it. I have probably hours on end of information to talk about Eddie Maguire, but my time's going to run out very quickly. Um, but I do want to mention the other thing he did, which was a disgrace, and the front line in the Herald Sun uh, in 2016. Eddie Maguire jokes about drowning a woman on Triple M radio. Are you taking... Oh, Taking the mickey? I almost went there. Um, uh, are you taking the mickey? Seriously? Jokes about drowning a woman on Triple M radio? This was during a, a charity raiser for the big freeze. He jokes about um, saying that, uh, that, we should, that he would pay 50 grand for Karen Wilson to, to stay under the water. You know, absolutely disgrace. Using his platform to speak hate speech? It's terrible, and I think that it's, it's shameful and it should be stood out, uh, stamped out as quickly as possible. There's um, other events also people be aware of just here in, in Western Australia. Liam Ryan for West Coast um, was a victim of that social media discrimination. It's easy for a keyboard warrior sitting at home who probably doesn't even know how to kick a football to get on there and call someone a monkey. It's absolutely shameful and a disgrace. And there was a great show of camaraderie between um, the, the GWS Giants and West Coast at Perth Stadium that, spoke, uh, that stood together after the game as one. And West Coast have got behind Liam Ryan absolutely well and truly, and I think it's excellent. Um, Eddie Betts, who's from Kalgoorlie, also suffers from a lot of discrimination, racial discrimination. Um, once again, on his uh, Twitter feed, um, which is a disgrace. Keyboard warriors out there harming our game and making it a shameful act, which is a disgrace, and I think we need to make sure we stamp it out and call it out. Now, in the quick time that I've got left, hope I'll get a little bit at the end. Um, the goldfields, on a positive note, has some great women's sports happening out there. 
Um, big shout out to the WABL um, Giants. They've uh, got a women's team out there and they push very hard to make sure they get represented. There are things that they need and they need sponsorship and we've got to make sure we get behind them. A lot of the men's team gets sponsorship. We've got to stop discriminating on commercial, uh, commercial viability and start looking at the fact that if we get women's sports up in the limelight, they can be as good or if not better. Just look at our cricket team. You know, talk about a sponsorship deal. They're brilliant. Um, and also want a quick mention to the uh, WA Football Commission for the Goldfields. They're doing a fabulous job out there for girls' football as well.